Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of The Moons of Jupiter by Isaac Asimov. This was actually written originally as under the pseudonym of Paul French. It's number six in the Lucky Star series, which, spoiler alert, I do enjoy. Uh, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts on racing at the end. So, Dane reads... The sixth novel in the extraterrestrial odyssey of David Starr. Sabotage of a revolutionary advance in space travel means every life is a hazard. Only a handful of highly trusted men were supposed to know the secret, but someone else knew. For David Starr, it was probably the most important and dangerous mission he had ever faced. He had to find the mysterious saboteur before the damage became irreparable. But the unknown enemy didn't seem human, not even remotely alien either. This is the final volume in the Star Blasting series of David Lucky Star, Space Ranger. So to begin with we have a lot of like footnotes that say like see Lucky Star in the oceans of Venus and uh, blah 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 to kind of link back to the other books but you don't have to have read them in order. You are going to get a bit more if you do but it's not a necessity you know. So we get the return of the V frogs from Lucky Star in the oceans of Venus and I'm just going to read it out here. He walked over to the small Venusian creature bobbing up and down in its enclosed water filled cage in the corner of the pilot room. He peered fondly down at it, his wide mouth grinning with pleasure. The V-Frog always had that effect on Big Man, or indeed on anyone. The V-Frog was a native of the Venusian Oceans, a tiny thing that seemed, at times, all eyes and feet. His body was green and frog-like and but six inches long. His two big eyes protruded like gleaming blackberries, and its sharp, strongly curved beak opened and closed at irregular intervals. At the moment, its six legs were retracted, so that the V-Frog hugged the bottom of its cage. But when Big Man tapped the top cover, they unfolded like a carpenter's rule and became stilts. And uh, yes, yeah, so the V-Frogs, v as it said, it comes from the oceans of Venus, even though when, uh, when Asimov reintroduced the stories, uh, when they came out under his own name, he did say, oh, now science has moved on and we know that there are, no, uh, there are no oceans on Venus and there never were. And I like this little detail here. Good day, Councilman Starr, said Donahue gruffly. It was always a matter of difficulty whether to say good morning, good afternoon, or good evening in space, where, strictly speaking, there was neither morning, afternoon, nor evening. Good day was a neutral term usually adopted by spacemen. We get some cats on the satellite, which is nice. And um, the guy says, like, the guy uses the, fast, the past tense, and then he goes, uh, meant to try it. You use the past tense, Councilman Star. Lucky stared solemnly at the two project officials. My V-Frog is dead. But I immediately suspected Councilman Starr because he had also used the past tense. Although, he, to be fair, he could have been using the past tense because he met the frog the day before. So he could have been like, oh, when I met him, he was looking happy. But I don't know, it made me suspicious. So a great quote by Lucky here, which reminds me of the Terry Pratchett quote about no man being truly dead until the echoes he created in the world have faded away. So Lucky says, no man is dead while he has a mind capable of thought. And then we get this, which I thought was quite fun, but um, I don't know. It kind of shows how old this book is. I think at some point actually, was it this one? One of them mentioned the first men to land on uh, the moon. And because it was written in 1957, obviously it wasn't um, Armstrong and Aldrin. But uh, anyway, um, so this is like Asimov looking at the future. Lucky had the planetary ephemerae before him. Like all great reference works, it was in book form rather than film. The turning of pages after all made for the more rapid location of a specific piece of information than did the long drawn out unwinding of film from end to end. Obviously now it's all digitised so you just enter a search term. So yeah, The Moons of Jupiter by Isaac Asimov, number 6 in the Lucky Star series. Overall I gave this a 4 out of 5, there's a satisfying ending to it. I really do enjoy the Lucky Star books. Uh, as I say, you can read them out of order so just grab them if you see them. But if you can read them in order, I'm, I'm sure it would be better. And uh, yeah. So there we have it, that's what I made of The Moons of Jupiter by Isaac Asimov. As always, I'd love to hear what you thought, so let me know in the comments if you've read this book. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.